The ferries for many years were an important link connecting the busy public transport systems that radiated out on both sides of the river. The ferries were at their busiest during the morning and evening rush hour when people commuted to and from their workplaces in Liverpool. Vehicles used the luggage boats until the Queensway Road Tunnel opened in 1934. Photographers worked on the river for many years, capturing views of ships using the port of Liverpool. Occasionally in the background of these pictures can be seen a Mersey ferry boat, like here in this view of the Campania, taken before the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. Now with the aid of these picture postcards, a fascinating glimpse into the past can be made of the ferries. The Henderson steamer Amapora, outward bound for the Far East, passes Seacombe as a ferry boat makes for Liverpool. In August 1911, the government dispatched HMS Antrim to the Mersey and sent in extra police and troops to Liverpool. After seamen, dock workers and railway employees went on strike, paralysing the port for a number of weeks. During the First World War, HMS Antrim, a Devonshire-class armoured cruiser, saw action. After the conflict, the vessel was broken up in the early 1920s. The Lusitania, moored as a buoy, takes on coal from barges. The liner consumed coal at the rate of over 800 tonnes per day during a transatlantic voyage. Every week, ferry passengers would have seen transatlantic liners like the Coronia arriving in the Mersey. The Cunard vessel was used on a weekly sailings between Liverpool and New York. A Wallasey ferry boat approaches the Liverpool landing stage as the Scotian, with tugs alongside her, takes on passengers before sailing for Canada. Montclair, anchored in the Mersey, made her maiden voyage on the 5th of May 1920 from Liverpool to Quebec and Montreal. A Wallasey luggage boat makes for Seacombe as the elder Dempster vessel Batar outward bound with a steel barge on her forward deck passes the pier head. In the distance the silhouette of a ferry boat as it makes for Woodside. A large number of sailing ships in the early 1920s went to the breakers yards but Gustav Eriksson found work for his vessels during the interwar years carrying Scandinavian timber to South Africa 
and Australian grain to Europe. Occasionally, one of his craft could be seen in the Mersey. September the 25th, 1919 and a busy scene at the landing stage as the Aquitania prepares to sail. In the foreground a group of vehicles wait to board the luggage boats. After the First World War petrol driven vehicles began to replace the horse and cars. 